morning, everybody. Can you tell something special is happening today? Things look a little different around here. <laughs> uh, I'm Nancy Lynn. I'm the lead pastor here at First United Methodist Church of Ann Arbor, and I want to welcome the First Congregational Church Choir, who is joining our chancel choir, as well as these wonderful musicians, because we do have a very special service today. So thank you all for being here. Thank you for the, the offering you're going to, to give to us today. A uh, few announcements before we get started. Um, first of all, a special note about our closing hymn. We'll be singing Lift Every Voice and Sing. It says in the bulletin that the congregation will sing verses 1 and 2. Make that just verse 1. Uh, otherwise, it sounds like we might get lost. Uh, <laughs> Um, also, we've got a number of things going on for Lent. This is the first Sunday in Lent. Uh, one thing I want to tell you about is the compassionate community conversations that start this afternoon. This is a special program that's been put together by the Interfaith Council on Peace and Justice, specifically for our church. It's four weeks long, and it's about how to vote with your heart, um, knowing that the, the election is not soon enough. <laughs> it's coming right up. <laughs> so that's at 4 o'clock this afternoon. You can register on the website. It's available to either come in person or also on uh, Zoom. It's also a Zoom option. Okay, Jennifer, it's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, church. Yeah, we were a little slow up in the uptake. Good morning, church. Good morning. There we go. If I have to be awake, you do too. <laughs> Good morning to our online church. Hello, online church. <clears throat> I am Jenna Boat Waggy. I'm the associate pastor here, and uh, there are other things that are happening during this season of Lent. Welcome to Lent, if you didn't know. Um, so one of the other things that is happening is that this Tuesday begins Tuesdays Together, which will run through the season of Lent. Uh, that is every Tuesday. It is starting at 5.30 with a meal together, and then we'll move into some intergenerational worship and some intergenerational study together. All are invited, hence the intergenerational. Uh, it would help us tremendously if you would let us know you're coming, though, however. So for those online, there's a link um, in the description. For those who are here in person, there is a link on the uh, news, news, headline news uh, within the, the bulletin that you can follow and make sure that you, you let us know that we can expect your lovely faces. Uh, one of the other things that is happening through the season of Lent is organ recitals that are beginning this Friday at the 12.15 hour here in the sanctuary with our very own Paul to begin. Paul, who is very, very far in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Paul. Um, so those are beginning this Friday, and they are continuing throughout the season. We're having guest organists come in to do some beautiful music during the lunchtime hour on Fridays. So I do invite you to those. Um, <clears throat> One of the other things that is happening in right now is, for those of us who are of the smaller variety in terms of children, there is no children's time today. Um, I don't think that you would want to sit on the laps of the instrumentalists, but uh, <laughs> for those who are kids, there will still be Sunday school, so you are more than welcome to head upstairs if that is of your ilk. Uh, and Miss Rachel is going to be having lessons for all involved. That's right. All right. I think that's everything. The beginning of Lent, lots to announce, but now let's worship together.
tell me, where will you turn when you're caught by temptation? We will all turn to the Lord. Tell me, what will you do when people deceive you and put you down? We will call upon the Lord. Tell me, how will you make it when pain and heartbreak bends you and bows you? We will call upon the Lord. Tell me, how will you feel when you come out of the wilderness leaning on the Lord? Our souls will be happy. We will shout all day. The Lord God, mighty in power, will bring us out. Whether we have come out of the wilderness or still find ourselves in the midst of it, we will lean on the Lord, for all our help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. We praise God, whose steadfast love endures forever. To those in person and online, may the peace of Christ be with you. Let's take a moment to greet one another.
Our scripture reading this morning is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 9 through 15. It can be found on page 34 of the New Testament of the Pew Bible. 
Mark 1, 9 through 15. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like, descending like a dove upon him. And a voice came from the heavens. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tested by Satan, and he was with the wild beast, and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. For the word of God in scripture for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. Since as far back as the second century, Christians have set aside the weeks leading up to Easter as a special time for spiritual reflection and preparation. These weeks are now known as the liturgical season of Lent, and its name, Lent, comes from a Middle English word that means springtime. You know, often by the time we get to February and March, we've grown pretty tired of the cold and the mud and the day after day of gray. Staying positive and gracious during this time gets to be difficult. And I think particularly in this long tale of the pandemic, we are weary. So just like Creation prepares for the greening of the trees and the birth of new life. We use Lent to prepare ourselves as well. The whole purpose of Lent is to look inward and ask, how is it with my soul? How do I need to tend to my soul so I'm ready to receive the gift of new life that comes with Easter morning? So for that reason, our Lenten theme this year is soul tending. From embracing God's love for us to releasing what causes us harm, sharing God's grace to creating new connections, each sermon will focus on some aspect of caring for our souls. And throughout the series, we will turn to the poetry of Mary Oliver, whose work so tenderly explores Christian themes with a poet's eye for beauty. So we begin this week with themes of wilderness and identity. Lent is 40 days long in recognition of the 40 days that Jesus spent in the wilderness preparing for his ministry. Much like Jesus entering into a wilderness of wild beasts and Satan's temptations, we all have periods in our lives that feel like wilderness for us. To be in the wilderness may mean feeling lost and alone, confused or disoriented, threatened by what is around you, and frightened that you may never get home again. Many life experiences lead us to the wilderness, the loss of a loved one, a divorce, moving to a new place, finishing school, selling the family home, global pandemics, these all are changes in our lives when a source of stability is taken away from us and we're unsure what comes next. In the wilderness, 
we need a sense of security and a boost to our self-worth. So what I want to focus on today is what happens to Jesus just before he enters the wilderness. It's a striking scene. Jesus is baptized by John the Baptist, and as he comes out of the water, the Holy Spirit descends from above to enter him, and the voice of God declares, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. Jesus' identity as God's own, loved beyond measure, is proclaimed aloud, celebrated, and affirmed by the Holy Spirit. And of course, the same is true for us, though we often forget it. Each of us is a beloved child of God. Each of us has received the gift of God's love and grace, strength and wisdom through the power of the Holy Spirit. When the wilderness looms before us, we are already prepared with all that we need as Satan tempts and wild beasts circle round because God has claimed us and never leaves us. Again, look at Jesus. He's there in the wilderness, but he is not alone. Angels wait on him. God is there to protect him, to care for him, to strengthen him, to guide him. No matter how Jesus may have suffered in the wilderness, no matter how angry or frightened or doubtful or despairing he might have been, God never left him. We'll hear the same theme in the three psalms that the choir will be singing shortly. Each of these psalms acknowledges that life is hard sometimes. And the psalmist doesn't shy away from lament and anger. In Psalm 13, we hear the psalmist cry, How long, Lord? How long will you hide your face from me? Yet despite the pain the psalmist expresses, he returns to finding assurance and comfort in God's steadfast faithfulness. We hear it in Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and staff, they comfort me. And in Psalm 121, I lift up my eyes to the hill, hills. Where will my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. It is no wonder that African Americans have found strength and hope in the Psalms ever since being taken from their homes and forced into slavery. There's one other thing that stands out to me in this scripture passage about Jesus and baptism and wilderness. When he returns from the wilderness, at the very beginning of his ministry, Jesus cries out, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe in the good news. As we enter this season of Lent, we're invited to reclaim our identities as children of God, to co find comfort in knowing that God is always there for us, and to align our souls with God, our creator. I believe that is what Jesus means when he says, repent. In scripture, the word repent means to change your heart and mind, a second meaning is to turn away from. So Lent is a time of reflecting on what change we may need to make to move closer to God and what we might need to turn away from. What is so beautiful is that when we turn away from something, inevitably we are turning toward something else, something new, precious, or grace-filled. This is what I find so profound in Mary Oliver's poem, Wild Geese. You do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. Tell me about despair, yours, and I will tell you mine. Meanwhile, the world goes on. 
Meanwhile, the sun and the clear pebbles of the rain are moving across the landscapes, over the prairies and the deep trees, the mountains and the rivers. Meanwhile, the wild geese high in the clean blue air are heading home again. Whoever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination calls to you like the wild geese, harsh and exciting, over and over, announcing your place in the family of things. I think it's interesting how almost matter of fact Mary Oliver is about despair. You have yours and I have mine, but while we are, we're doing that, we're missing the unfolding of God's creation the beautiful world that God delights in, whatever we carry with us in guilt or shame or regrets or hopelessness or helplessness leads us to miss the tremendous world of sunshine and rain, of mountains and deep trees, of wild geese crying out as they make their way north. This is where we belong. We have our place here, in creation. And this is the place where God watches over us, so deeply loves us, and waits for us to turn and claim the promise of life as God's own beloved. May it be so. Amen. I invite you to join me in prayer. <laughs> God of the mountains and the forests, God of the smallest sand pieces and the largest cloud systems, we come to you and we thank you for this opportunity to be in worship, to be in front of you, to be allowed to say all that is on our minds, and Lord, we come to you recognizing that the wilderness is so vast. We tell you about our despair. We tell you about our frustration that the world may be beautiful, but the people in it are frustrating. And we tell you about all of the ways that there are iniquities and inequities and the ways in which we have learned to harm the world you have given us and the ways that we harm each other. Forgive us for the evil that we embrace and rename so that it looks better. Forgive us for all of the ways in which we become mired in the despair and the recognition again and again and again that you have claimed us, every one. Our vows of baptism, Lord, say that we will trust in grace, say that we will connect to community, say that we will renounce wickedness, say that we will repent. And in each time we affirm these, you say, yes, this one is mine, this one is my beloved in whom I am well pleased and remind us that we go into the wilderness with you. For all of the ways in which your patience loves us, for all of the ways in which our patience is still growing, for all of the ways in which grace does not wait for us to see how beautiful the mountains are to exist, we thank you and for all of the ways in which we do not know what to say else other than we are here, use us. We speak in the words that you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we come into this time of offering, we are led by the great offering of music that is happening, as happens every week. We are led by the great offering of recognition that this time is God's, that these gifts are God's, that these talents are God's, and we give back that which was given to us freely. I invite you as you listen to consider the ways in which God has gifted you and is calling you back to the work of reconciliation, repair, and grace.
Well, amen and amen. <laughs> My thanks to all of those who have gathered here for this music this morning. We are indeed blessed to have such talents, amen. amen. Join me in a different kind of prayer. Holy One, we offer this, this worship, this song, these stories, these histories, these hopes, our gifts, our talents, ourselves. We offer them freely and ask that you use them to build a world in which there is no misery, a world in which we are aware of the beauty around us, a world that is yours and we know it. We ask all of these things in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
my thanks to Genevieve. That was amazing. Now, friends, go out into the world, your souls filled, your hearts inspired. Go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go as God's beloved. Amen.